Hey, this is Jody with WeldingTipsAndTricks.com with another weekly video. This week's video is TIG welding some really thin wall tubing for a bicycle. And the bicycle will be welded up next week, but first we're going to do some test welds on some of these little joints here, some practice pieces that have saddles cut in them. They're coped. Really good fit ups. And I'm going to weld a couple of them up with some different filler rods. And I'm going to use this little third hand tool. You see that copper wound around there is to pick up a good ground off the table and I have a little ball of copper welded on the tip here too. I have, even while I'm filming, I have watched the arc strike on my uh, jump off the, the tip of that third hand onto the part and so I eliminated that by using that copper. So I'm going to put a couple of tacks on it and I'm going to weld a couple of these out and we're going to do some testing on them. And I'm using a couple of different filler rods. ER70S2 because this tubing is a steel alloy. It's a proprietary alloy so they're not forthcoming with the uh, composition. It's not chromoly. It might be similar to chromoly. It might be really similar to cold roll, then it's just cold worked really severely. But anyway, I am using the rule of 33. 33 pulses a second, 33% on time, and 33% background current because it works and it is so easy to remember. Just 33 across the board. And it really does help. This is 32 thousandths, and if there's any gap, that pulse rate of 33 with the, with the settings like they are gives me an extra second to get rod in there before it just keyholes out and I get a hole and that I have to fill in. And also, you might notice that the technique I'm using is I just come a little bit forward before I back up and get over the heavy part of the puddle again. That also helps from blowing a hole. Now, I'm, when you're pulsing like this, generally, Without pulse, you need about one amp per thousand, so I would only need 32 amps here. But when you're pulsing like this, and you have a, a pretty low background rate, you, you sometimes have to set the amperage to about twice. So I've got it set up to about 64 uh, amps, and that was that was pretty good. Didn't quite need all the all of it on the foot pedal, but it worked out okay. So that was the ER70S2 filler rod. I'm getting ready to use a rod called Weld Mold 880, which when I, once I fired up on it, I initially thought this is this is 312 stainless. Well, it's just like 312 stainless does. It may not be exactly, but I wouldn't be surprised if it was very similar to just being 312 stainless. Some maintenance rod companies uh, basically label 312 as an all-purpose rod. The manufacturer of this tubing uh, recommends using the Weld Mold 880 as a, a possible uh, rod for this uh, for this alloy because it's got good elongation and good properties and I'll tell you what it welds really nice really nice so there's the ER70S2 side and there's the weld mold 880 side so I, I like it so I took it out to the parking lot and just just the quickest thing I could think to do was just smack it around a little bit and see if it welds pop loose and it puckered up real good where it flattened out but nothing really tore or was alarming. I certainly would ride a bicycle well with either rod. Now I had a chance to use this today. It's a Tech South PowerPoint tungsten grinder and I kind of like it. You, you know if you've read much of my website I'm not really overly enthused about tungsten grinders just because some of them cost so much that I could actually almost buy a welding machine for what I would pay for a tungsten grinder. But this one is pretty inexpensive. It's I saw one online for uh, actually I saw one today for $225 and it's a very simple little grinder and it works it cuts if you get something on there a blob of metal on there it cuts it off it sharpens and it's got a little window port there that you can actually see it sharpening so you can see if you get an even point on it and also will flat put a little slight flat on the tip if you if you like to do that but it's just it's just simple and it works and uh, the grinding wheels the uh, diamond wheels that go with it are uh, somewhat cheaper than most others, so kind of like it. Not saying I'm going to get one, but I might. And that's it for today. Uh, thanks for watching, and visit WeldingTipsAndTricks.com.